Cameron for Sweet Time here. I'm here at the Gigabyte headquarters in Taipei. Uh, with me, I've got Colin and Hi Cookie. And uh, what we've got here is the X58A OC motherboard. This is a board that was, uh, this is Hi Cookie's baby. Um, it's designed uh, from the ground up for overclocking. So, uh, Hi Cookie and uh, Colin are going to give us some details about the board right now. Um, so, Hi Cookie, where, where, where would you like to start? What's, the, what's one of the big features of this motherboard? Uh, this motherboard comes with uh, five features. One is uh, OCVIM, so you can overclock the PDI frequency to give you your CPU extra power. And the second is uh, the OC touch, you can do a highway real time overclocking via those buttons, and they also have the 4 gig button to make you quickly overclock to 4 gig. And the next is the OCPG, they have a two SATA connect there. And uh, they can give you extra power to make you stable with your graphical overclocking. And uh, next is the OC Cool. The OC Cool, the design is a dead heat out of the back I.O. And uh, also have the LED with uh, two LED light here and make your chassis looking cool. Okay. okay. And then next is the, this one is the OG Dio BIOS. We have a switch here, so you can switch to any bus you want to do the overclocking or you want to do the 24, 24 7. Yeah, and I also noticed you've got like, I don't know, six or seven of these uh, fan headers here. They're, they're smart fan headers as well, right? Yes. yes. So there's lots of calling potential for, uh, for overclockers. Yes. Okay, so uh, we've just run over, like, you've given us an overview of the, the features. So now if we can. Um, uh, the overclocking of the, the uh, power switches here, how, how exactly does that work and how, how does that uh, help the overclocker? Okay, the, you can see the entire motherboard will come out with the post caps. They are very easy to make you uh, to do the installation, you do the overclocking with the CPU area, also with the graphic card area. And uh, the, uh, the OCVIM is uh, the stock frequency of the PWM is uh, 400K. And with our uh, experiments, when you do the extreme overclocking, you, you overclock the power frequency to 600K or even one man, then we will increase um, 50, or 50 to 150 MHz of your total CPU frequency. Okay, now with the, this is the 4G button, oh, yes. uh, so uh, part of the OC touch feature, so if someone yes. uh, pushes the 4G button, yes. of course it will automatically uh, overclock the CPU to 4 gig. Yes. Um, does, it, does it matter what CPU cooler someone is using? Uh, not actually. I have a special table for the for your CPU, including the Bloomfield or Gopta. So I will give you the, the separate table for your CPU and then make sure your CPU can run in 4 gig. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So he did a lot of testing as well to different coolers, different settings. So this is a very safe setting. So for for G, G just pressing a button is, is pretty good. Yes, okay. and it also is uh, compatible with the memory, with uh, even even with the memory without XMP profile. He also can let you overclock it to four G. So you guys have, you must have a lot of CPU coolers lying around. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, now moving down, moving down on board. Uh, what, what are these, uh, what are these uh, connectors here? Is this for uh, measuring voltage? Can you, can you tell us a little bit how, how this works? Yes. Yeah, so these are actually uh, voltage uh, read points. So you can actually use the pads if you want. So your main component uh, voltages. Also, there's a little module here as well. So you can connect your, your thermal meter or, or your, your meter to directly to this pad. Okay, and that, that measures all sort of different voltages of all, all various parts of the board. Yeah. The voltage of totally have a seven. They are overclocked, uh, often used to recognize the voltage. So, yeah. Okay. Now, hi, quickly. The, these two ports here. I don't know. I mean, our readers. I don't know if they've seen them or not. Uh, I hadn't before. Can you can you explain what they are? What these ports are and, and what they do? Why why are they there? Uh, they looks like a SATA connector, right? but exactly they are SATA connectors. SATA power connector. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and. Uh, from the uh, SATA connector, you give the turbo extra power to make your PCIe stable. Yes. So also you you can connect to and the SATA cable. Also you can run this cable to your hard drive. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. I mean they've obviously been put in this spot because for the cable cable inconvenience they are close to where the hard 
regards to yes, yes. when and so in the case. And that's especially important for if you're doing four-way crossfire, right? Because you want to have more power for your VGA cards, more stable power. So this is actually able to take the power from the different rails of your uh, power supply. So you're not going to overload your power supply. It's kind of like a more stable flow of power, right? So it's going to aid in the whole overclocking process. All right, moving further down south of, uh, south of the board, um, we've got this, uh, this uh, special kind of OC dual bias, right? Yes, OC so dual bias. Can be, what, how, how does this work? What, 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 how, what's, how is this good for m -plugins? Okay. Uh, the OC dual bias lets you to easily compare two versions of the bias. So you, you can reduce the, the risk if you want to upgrade the BIOS. And the via the, the switch, you can switch to any BIOS you want to use it. And then they also have the in LED lights here. Right. So let's just see which BIOS you are using you are using right now. Okay, so if you if you are having if you haven't had one computer yeah. in your house, yes. um, you might use a visual white system. Yes. So you might have like a stable um, BIOS that's not overclocked. Yes. And then night time you want to play games or something, or you want to try and set a world record or something. Yes. Right? Then you just switch it yes. into like your your tuned BIOS, right? Yes. So that's a good idea. Okay, now coming up to the PCI Express slots. Um, what? Uh, how many? How many PCI Express range for each of these slots? Okay, the total PCI Express uh, have a uh, thirty eight and and thirty two. They all come from the North Bridge. They have uh, at the first one they're sixteen. So it's a 16 and the 2 by 8. 8 and 8, okay. Yes. So 16, 8 and 8. Yeah. For uh, quad, for quad, uh, for quad or crossfire? Uh, for four way crossfire okay. and the three way SLI. A three way SLI, yeah. okay. Uh, now you've also got a PCI Express, um, sorry, it's actually a PCI uh, slot here. What, what, what was the reason for putting this here? Uh, this one is for your uh, compatible with your really old device or you want to put another uh, debug car because uh, the debug car here is from the, uh, from the 90 poles if uh, you have uh, another debug car you will find the 80 pole they will give uh, more information about the, the debugs yeah more detailed reports yeah. so you can see exactly what's happening yes all right, we'll switch over to the back I.O. panel now. Uh, now, come and tell me, is Gigabyte, is Gigabyte being cheap here? Why are there so few ports? Or what's, or what, I mean, what's the, what's the real reason why there's so few ports here? Can you tell us? Sure, sure. There's a couple of different reasons. You know, obviously overclockers, they, you know, we asked them what they needed for, for overclocking specific board. And a lot of the extra peripherals, they don't need. They don't need the highest end of audio. They don't need 20 different USB ports. Um, and in fact, if you have more ports, you know, people are going to connect more things to those ports and that means those ports are pulling the CPU. So your overclocking performance can actually go down. And of course, you know, less ports means that we're able to provide this board at a much lower price point as well. But of course, you still get all your connectivity that you need. You have four USB here, two USB 2 and two USB 3, and there's some front headers for some more USB as well. So you definitely still have connection. But right. this is definitely for overclocking. So basically, yeah, the essential stuff's there. Some stuff has been stripped away, um, but you guys have kept it at a, a reasonable, reasonable price. Um, but where some where some of the parts have been taken away, you, you've added it in with like uh, speci um, specific parts that are required to you know to boost the overclocking of this board, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're using much more expensive components, you know, throughout the entire board. So we definitely decided to put the value there rather than have it on these peripherals that maybe overclockers don't need. And I uh, can uh, testify to that. Uh, we did have a system set up here earlier where uh, High Cookie had a, uh, I believe it was like a Zalman air cooler set up and he did manage to run the CPU at 5.2 gigahertz on air. So that, that is pretty impressive. So uh, Colin, maybe if we can um, just finish off with the, uh, with the price, the expected price, and when, when we think about to buy the uh, x 58 AOC uh, motherboard. So the expected price is, uh, well, it depends on the region. Um, right now, we're giving a, a price of 280 uh, USD, and it's expected in the middle of March, sometime middle of March. So soon. Okay, so uh, this has been uh, Cameron for Tweaktown at the Gigabyte headquarters in Taipei, looking at the uh, Gigabyte X58 AOC motherboard. Um, we will have a review online uh, a little bit later. Um, but for now, here's your, here's your preview of this, uh, you know, this overclocking motherboard from Gigabyte that has been built from the ground up for precisely that reason.